Go Sweet Tea. I forgot my uh, LSU cup this morning, so I uh, just got the old Yeti here with some sweet tea in it. Hey, God bless and go fish, everybody. Charlie Burr here. Thank you all for uh, checking my channel out. And listen, if you like, uh, if you're into live scope, if you're into crappie fishing, uh, the purpose of my channel is to uh, show you that little things I do, the tips, tactics, presentations, baits, things that I use to catch crappie over here in East Texas. And if you like live scope, I, I fished without live scope for my entire life uh, until just uh, about three or four years ago. Got the live scope and I love it. Uh, so love it or hate it, that's what you're going to see on this channel. And I hope you like it. And if you do, if you do have two reasons for doing this uh, channel to, to help you, try to help you be uh, more proficient at your crappie fishing and to encourage you. Uh, it's kind of my ministry, I guess you'd say. I'm not a preacher or a teacher, but uh, just lots of good life experiences. And um, I never take up an offering, but if you want to help me financially, and I will never ask for a dime, but you can contribute and it won't cost you a dime. If you're already watching, hey, just subscribe and watch the video. And the good folks at Google will uh, give me a love offering, I guess you could say. So uh, that's a good way to uh, make the man pay me. And you don't have to, but you will bless me, and I'd appreciate it. Anyway, um, what I wanted to talk to you real quick about before I get out here, I haven't even turned on the live scope yet, so I don't, I don't know what I will see. I know what I have seen in the past, but... Uh, kind of like the stock market uh, you can't judge today by past performance but um, before I get started you know I always like to try to give you a little word of encouragement or whatever but I was watching the news the other night and um, there was this fella on there I won't mention any names but um, he's uh, I guess you, you would say he's the he's the head politician in our country and he made a comment um, he, he's, he's known for his uh, blunders, and he made this comment, think about what you're thinking about. Come on, man, think about what you're thinking about. I heard that, and I thought, <laughs> what a profound statement from the leader of, so-called leader of the free world. Uh, I just laughed it off. But you know what? What happened is all during the next day and the next day, and the third and fourth day, all I could hear, hear in, my, in my mind, all I could think about was, think about what you're thinking about, that statement. You ever heard one of those jingles on, on a commercial or a song, and it just, it's not something you really like, but it just sticks in your mind, and you can't get rid of it? You know what I'm talking about. Well, I kept hearing that, uh, that think about what you're thinking about. A week passed by. It's been probably, what, two, oh, maybe two weeks now? I'm not sure. But anyway, um, I started thinking about that. I said, you know, that may have been a profound statement after all. Think about what you're thinking about. How much do we emphasis? Have you ever considered how much emphasis we put on thinking, our thought life? And, uh, hey, we even have a statue of the thinker, you know what I mean? And um, so I, I started thinking about it. And my mind, my brain never rests. It's just, it won't let me sleep. It's just, it's, it won't shut down. But I was thinking back, I thought all the way back to some of my childhood memories. And I guess thinking for me, a lot, I'm a heavy thinker. I guess it comes from my childhood, and my mom made sure that I was a, I was a uh, hard thinker, real hard thinker. There was a time when I was a, uh, finally made it to my senior year, and of high school, and um, there was this one day that I thought uh, it would be pretty, pretty neat, pretty cool idea, 
if me and my buddy uh, skipped school that day. Well, I didn't care for school, didn't like it at all, except for PE. So we, uh, we decided to skip school. And not only did we skip school, but we partake, partook of some uh, adult beverages. Yep, I'm not proud to say, but before God got a hold to me and changed some of my ways, I yeah, I was a minor partaking of adult beverages. And we, we uh, had partaken of several of those adult beverages. And all of a sudden, you know, school didn't seem like such a bad thing to do that day. So we, what did we do? We, we checked in to school. And it just so happened that my next door neighbor was the secretary in the office and she didn't really like me anyway as a neighbor or uh, as a student. And no doubt she could um, smell the fumes coming off of us and she alerted the principal and I got three days suspension. So I come home and boy, the hardest thing to do was tell my mother. I told my mother, and she says, Charles Thomas, isn't it? Don't you love how your mamas always call you by your middle name when you're in trouble? Charles Thomas, what in the world were you thinking? What were you thinking? And I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know, Mom. I, I, I thought, you know, I thought, she said, well, you thought wrong. Whatever it was, you thought wrong. But you know what? Next three weekends, you're going to sit in your room, and you're going to rethink it. And you got three weekends to just think about that bonehead move that you made. Yes, ma'am. So I learned from a very early uh, childhood, young manhood, how to become a thinker. Well, I guess the old blunder boy had something there. Think about what you're thinking about. Uh, let me read something to you. The Bible says, um, it says, Finally, brothers, what are the, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think about these things. Think about what you're thinking about, guys. What are you thinking about? So, guys, um, what are you thinking about? You know, there's a, uh, there's a guy that came to my church, uh, an evangelist, uh, you may have seen him on TV or heard him on the radio, David Ring. I love that guy, but he came to my church one night, and David Ring has cerebral palsy, and I love his line. He always says, I have cerebral palsy. What's your excuse? I love that guy, but he came to our church one night, and I, I thought about something that he said in reference to, to this little, hopefully, word of encouragement that I, I want to give you guys. You know, what are you thinking, guys? Are you thinking, you know, I'm thinking, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm short, I'm ugly, uh, I'm not good at anything, uh, I'm just, I'm a nobody. You know, and I love what David Ring said to us. He looked out over the congregation and because you know there's people that think that about themselves they don't think highly of themselves and he said you know he said god didn't make any junk god didn't make any trash he said but from the looks of some of you he come a real close and i thought we were gonna die laughing that was so funny but you know Here's a man with cerebral palsy, and he said, what's your excuse, Charlie Burra? What's your excuse? Well, guys, 
if you're thinking, you know, if you don't think highly of yourself, man, the Bible says, the Bible says you are, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Number two, what are you thinking about, guys? Maybe you're thinking, man, I am under such attack. Everywhere I turn, I'm being attacked. And it's, man, I've got some giants come after me. There, there is, there's no way. I can I can defeat this this problem that's coming my way. No, no, buddy, man. The Bible says that no weapon, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. What are you thinking about? Think about what you're thinking about. Think about God's word, God's answer to to your negative way of thinking. God's positive encouragement and truth and fact to you in the way that you're thinking. And and finally, guys, I'll leave you with this. You know. Maybe you're thinking that, uh, you know, one of your thoughts, and I'm just touching on different things that have happened to me and I, that I have thought, but, uh, you know, you ever had those days where it seems like, or weeks, I've had a week like this before, no matter what you touch, it just goes south. Things are breaking on you. It's like, why? Why? Why, God, is this happening to me? I don't understand it. Give you a good example. Uh, last time I went fishing, I hadn't intended last week to do a video on Lake of the Pines, but and I should have, of my bloops and blunders, everything, everything I touched just cratered. I mean, rods were twisting up with line and tangling up. I was getting hung up on stumps in the boat. Had to crank the big motor to get off. It was just everything was going bad. Then my live scope. My live scope messed up. The transducer went out. I'm like, oh my gosh, what else? Well, let me tell you, all things. Bible says all things. All things. Not just a few. All things work together for the good. For those that love Christ and are called according to his purposes. All things work together for the good. So when a negative thing happens, and I started getting happy after I really thought about what I was thinking about, let me tell you what happened real quick, and then we're going to go fish. But my uh, live scope transducer, my LOVS 32, it uh, was still functioning, but it lost one of its uh, functions to calibrate the compass. It, it, it went out. I knew that was a transducer issue. I've seen it before. So I, I'd been wanting, I had. I was upset at first when it went out. But I thought, well, hey, I've been wanting to upgrade to the 34. I guess I'll do it. I'll just, I'll just take some more out of Miss Pam's retirement and uh, I'll, I'll get her one of those, one of those LVS 34s. So uh, I called Garmin, and um, they looked it up, and they said, oh, man, Charlie, that transducer is uh, it's out of warranty. And we talked a little bit, and he said, you know, I, I guess I found favor with the guy for whatever reason. He said, you know, Charlie, uh, tell you what, I'm, 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 it's not out of warranty that much. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to cover it. He said, you send us that transducer, and we'll send you uh, a a brand new one, brand spanking new one. And I said, man, can you just send me a 34? And God said, well, you know, don't push your luck. <laughs> he said, no, it has to be a like for like. Can't send you a 34. He said, but I'll send you a 32. You sell it and then take that money and buy you a 34 if you want to. So uh, I did and they did and I did. I sent the old one, they sent me a new one and I sold the old one. And I took that money and I've got a brand new LPS 34 that we're going to check out today. So all things work together for the good that time. They really did. I can, uh, I can testify to that. So uh, think about what you're thinking about, guys. Uh, uh, don't look down, look up. Think positive and encourage somebody today. Man, I hope I've encouraged you and I hope you'll go out and pass it along, pay it forward, and, and you will in, in turn encourage somebody. You'll feel better for it. Well, look, we're out here. God bless you. We're out here on uh, Lake No Cantel. I wanted to go back to the pines, found some fish over there, caught a few, quite a few. But it's a long drive for me, so I just came to Lake No Cantel. Don't know what things are going to lo look like out here with this 34, but we're about to see. 
Hey, uh, let's go fish. All right, guys, I, uh, show you what I'm on. I will be using today. It's a ACC 12 foot rear seat. Been using that for a long time. As always, I, I like to show, see how that's 12 foot rod and it balances so well. Put that rod, that reel on the end of that rod and uh, really balance, balances this long thing out. And I'm gonna start out with Alan Taylor, big time. Alan Taylor's big time crappie jigs, crappie baits. Catch those big time crappie. Uh, give old Alan a call. He'll fix you up with a Charlie Goldfish package right here. That is, that bait right there has caught more fish. Charlie Chicken Color is what we call it. And uh, fish seem to like it on just about any lake I go to. But anyway, I'm anxious. I've been up here uh, tweaking on this uh, 34. It's got the new. Uh, color limit so I've been adjusting the gain the uh, color limit and the uh, couple other settings noise reject all that just to get a good picture I'm seeing a little bit of a uh, hey let me show you here's how I set up I look uh, I'll move the screen back to That's 30 feet. What I do, guys, is I just drop my jig in the water. See it right there at that 8, 10 foot mark. I juke it up and down where I can, where I can see it. I want to be able to have good visual on, on two things, the jig and the fish. And I've got my gain. I normally run it up about, I don't know, about... Uh, 60 65 but I'm, i've got some clutter down here today i think it's thermal climb. uh so for that reason i'm having to run the game a little bit lower in case there's a fish down there i'll be able to see what's going on um so I'm, we'll do it at 55 percent go down here to sonar setup i've got the noise reject on medium ghost reject off tvg is on low uh black emerald color gain color gain that that makes the screen light up a little a little brighter. See that jig? And if I run the color down, the color gain, it's not as bright. So I run it on up. I'll put it at 95. And then color limit, that's the new thing. Um so you can run it all up. 100% it takes a lot of this clutter out but I'm just afraid I'm gonna lose some detail like that tree right there so I'm gonna run it back down see I'm bringing in more of that tree I don't know guys I think I'll just put it on about about 80 maybe I can still see a fish swimming around if they're down that deep if they are then I'll have to I'll have to tweak it again so we'll, we'll put it on about let's see 80 around 80 81 is that enough we'll go with uh 80 i think let me see if i can pick up that jig looks pretty good Okay, we'll go with that just for a fish or two, see what happens. See what we got around here. Right there. Okay, I was short. I'm going to pitch again. I like to see that jig glide into him like this
and I'm still trying to figure out the presentation and color that they want today. They didn't like the drive-by, so I'm going to try a real slow descent right there. Hold it over him. Pick it up, pick it up. He's chasing it. Oh, he, he just lifted. it. All right, that tells me he's really not crazy about that color. He sucked it up. I didn't set the hook because I don't think he was on there. Charlie Chicken was not the meal of choice. So, grab another Alan Taylor. This is a black and white. Mm, let's see here. I'm going to do a little drop and stop. He wasn't crazy about that, was he? So it may not be the color. It may just be that fish. It may be the presentation. It may be the color. This thing about crappie fishing. Just because you caught them on a color uh, yesterday doesn't mean they're going to hit it today or this afternoon. I'm going to ease up a little closer here. He's drifted off. Okay, let's try this again. I'm not very good with no breeze. I don't mind telling y'all. I uh, I drifted up on top of that guy. That one's behind me. So let's just find another. Seems to be plenty out here. I stopped at the right place anyhow. thing I like about crappie fishing is just uh, it's a challenge. If it was the same every time, it would it would get old. But for me, it's a challenge figuring out what they want, how they want it. Okay. See, that guy's following it. He wouldn't bite it either. All right, we're going to try a third color. I, I've got three colors I'm going to try. And uh, make sure the screen looks awful. Make sure I was still filming there. All right, let's catch a fish. Come on, come on, come on, man. Okay, there's Jig, there's the fish. Bring the two together. A 
like the picture there. Still got that clutter at the bottom, but that's okay. It's below the fish. Let's just let him look at it. That's what he wants. Oh, God, did y'all see that? That's the color he wanted, though. He hit it. I just, uh, I didn't stick him good enough. That was encouraging. Okay. That was a, uh, just a, what was that? Mississippi mud. Oh, Mississippi mud has been, uh, having its days here lately. I had a, a last trip. They liked it, or the Charlie Chicken equally as well. Charlie Chicken's been hard to beat, but hey, there's, you know. And don't get me wrong, guys. There's nothing wrong with the minnow game. But uh, I just, uh, I like the jigs. That's a good fish right there. We need to get him in the boat. We need him in the boat. Uh, so I did the latest update. Uh, for the chart plotter, got the LVS 34. I like it. I like it. I, I held off uh, from the reports. Everybody, the majority of people were not liking it. And who knows? Maybe Garmin cleaned it up. Let's see. We need we need a fish in the boat. We really do. I might be like oh uh, my buddy Mike, oh Mikey. Maybe I've got the spirit of Mike has got on me. Can't have that. Got one looking. There he is. Get on there. Come on up. We got that spirit of Mike off of me anyway. Look at him fight on that screen. Ain't that pretty? Okay. Oh, he's a little, he's a little runt. He's a little runt. I'm not going to throw him back. Boy, he is hooked right in the end of his mouth. I don't know if you can see that Mississippi mud right here. My screen is, God, oh, I can't see. What is it? All right, one down. Oh, I gotta get the, I gotta get the, uh, the liar out. Les Milligan, guide on Lake of the Pines, gave me this, and I have just thoroughly enjoyed it. I had the clicker. A little uh push the little button a little silver clicker but sometimes it would misfire it would click double or not click and one fish over is not good when the man is looking in your live well now number one one down 24 to go I don't think those guys got any big hips on them, but since we're right here, I just want to see. There's number two. Come on up here. ACC and big time crappie baits. Oh, get 
get in here. Get in here. Another one, boy. They are just not really romping it. Number two. All right. Two down. Let's see. Two down. Two from 25. Let's do some cipher for me there, Jeffro. Okay. I mean, you got 23 more, Uncle Jed. Do some of them gazintas in me for me, boy. <laughs> Beverly Hillbillies I'm talking about, guys. Well, gazintas. The two gazinta four two times. Four gazinta eight two times. Ooh, that boy can cipher, Uncle Jed would say. Let's see if that third one wants to bite. On the tree. Got to get it off the tree. There we go. And he wanted to bite also. That Mississippi mud. Get on the screen there, buddy. Mississippi mud. Mm. That's a little bit better fish right here. Three. Little drop and stop. Let's see what happens here. Get it lined up. Drop it down. There he comes. He wiggled. He wiggled. I thought he was going to move on it. He really did. See if I can ease it back to him. Here he comes. There he is. See, I had to kind of take it from him. Ooh, he's got a little fight to him. I don't like to horse them in, guys. I, no more than they've been hooked. I don't use a net. Whoa. Oh, Lord have mercy. I just about, I got one of them bonehead, uh, bonehead tackle. I got one of their uh, line cutters stuck to my uh, console right here. And the line just about went into it. That would not have been good. All right, number four. Can y'all see that little... Um, Spinner, spinner blade. There you go. I put that on there at times, not all the time, but um, when they act a little, little stupid on me, I'll I'll put that little spinner blade, and uh, I don't know. Judge for yourself. Or as they say on TV, I report, you decide. Ten feet. I really like the others coming into view, but I can't pass this one guy up. I mean, let's see where are we at. I need to go back to the right. Where? Where's my jig? Where's my jig? There we go. Come on. Come on. Oh, there you go. Oh, he's, he's feeling like he's got a little weight to him. Oh, yes, he does. God. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. your buddies. That's number five. All right. Thank you, Jesus. I like braid, but braid don't like me. It, 
it is going to tangle. But when you have a big fish and he gets around a tree, all that frustration is worth it. I have I have landed more fish that uh, would have broke some monofilament. And this is a uh, eight or ten pound, I forget which. All right, let's go back into search mode. All right, it looks like a chicken swimming around here at about 40 feet. Let's see if it gets any bigger. All right, bombs away. Kind of stopped there, didn't he? Trying to assess the situation. Got him. Ooh, that's a big fish. Get over here. Oh. oh, that's a big old crappie there. And I turned the camera off naturally. Guys, I just stuck this fish. I turned the camera on. Hadn't taken him, hadn't pulled him all the way up yet. He's he's a good fish. I had turned the camera off. That might be a two pounder here. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I came after. Nice fish there. He was just, uh, I think I got him on the live scope footage. He was just, uh, just a chicken. All right, guys, it uh, it has been an awesome, awesome day. I have caught a ton of fish, and I stopped on 24 so I could catch that last fish of the day. And that's been the uh, this has been the the snack of choice is right there with a the willow leaf blade. Is that uh, Mississippi mud? I think is what. Alan Taylor calls this. Now I can tell you this: I've got a buddy over there fishing. Uh, oh, he's about a hundred yards away. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Tucker, and uh, Tommy has uh, he didn't he didn't have uh, the color that they wanted. I didn't have any more of these, but I did have some real similar, uh, some ACC plastic uh, in this color. So I trolled over there and. Tommy's giving me a couple of hollers. He's catching them now on that. Uh, it's an ACC, uh, the shank, and it's the brown and chartreuse shank. Uh, the smaller one is, is what he's catching them on. So, hey, plastic, hair, they don't care. As long as it's got this color. All right, let's crip up here and see if we can catch another fish or two. Before we call it a day, there's one right there. Oh, yeah, 26 feet away. Got a few bait fish hanging out over his head there. I like those fish on the straight timber. I'll take those. Although I did find a uh, small group of crappie that were uh, ganged up on a tree. It was about 
five or six of them and I caught uh, five out of the six before they figured me out all right here we go and my rod is tangled up let's get that untwisted all right get everything going our way here where you at there you are 10 feet out begin our descent approaching the target get away little one all right y'all see that jig went right over his head what did he do nothing nothing that's been the game today I always give him a chance but uh they haven't I that last fish I caught I held it on him for dang near 30 seconds before he finally committed let's try it again I'm still just a tad too far out that bait is it's drifting by. Let's get a little bit closer. They haven't been spooking. That ought to do it. This third time's a charm. All right, here we go. Get lined up. I'm gonna do a drop a bomb on him here. out of this tree come on buddy you know you want it get you some big time get you some big time crappie jig there I was watching a bubble I thought it was my jig my bad there we go, right there. Here he comes. He moved on it, but he sure did not. He sure did not bite, did he? Oh, there he is. Second time got him. Come on up, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Hey, if you got to stop with the fish of the day. Ooh. Some nice fish today, guys. All of them about like this, about pound and a half, pound seven five, maybe uh, maybe one or two two pounders. Good fish. Well, guys, that's it. That's another uh, trip in the books for Lake No Cantel over here in East Texas. Hope you enjoyed uh, what you saw. Hope it uh, helps you. Hope you hope you saw a little tip or something in there that uh, helps you with your live scope get out the fishing is getting good it's it's just going to get gooder and gooder from here on out probably caught uh oh gosh i probably caught a good uh, 35 today but uh y'all get out enjoy some of this fall weather it's summer right now but falls hey it might be here next week again anyway god bless y'all go fish i'll catch you next time